wow. Five months ago, I was sitting on my bed. It was about midnight. It was snowing outside. We probably had a foot of snow on the ground. And I was dreaming and planning this year's garden. I know in the dead of winter, it seems like summer and gardening season is never gonna come. But I knew in order to have our best garden yet, there was gonna have to be quite a bit of planning involved because we didn't want to do what we did last year, which was not even think about the garden until mid-June and then in a scurry, try to get the garden ready and run to the garden center to buy their 50% off transplants. Because there's really nothing else to do when there's a foot of snow on the ground. I spent a lot of time researching and deciding what we needed to do to have our best garden ever. I spent a lot of time thinking about what we want to plant, how much of those things, what varieties we wanted to plant, when to put things in the ground, when to start seeds indoors. And at the time, it seemed that the day was never gonna come to put stuff into the ground. Also, in previous gardens, I can say that there is an official designated planting day where the garden happened and it came to life. And I think as a newer gardener, it's easy to think that's how gardening works. And as I get a little bit more advanced, I realize gardening is a process and it starts long before you put seeds or your transplants into the ground. In fact, this year, all of the work is pretty much done and that's the last thing we have to do to start the garden. I'll go ahead and link to our gardening playlist in the description of this video, but prior to now, we've we built a couple new raised beds in the garden, we brought in new soil, we brought in compost, we started a compost pile for next year. We completely overhauled our watering system and that's what I'm testing tonight. Before we put everything in the ground and mulch it over, I want to really see where this water is gonna go, how far we want it to spread. And we also want to make sure that the soil isn't bone dry for planting day tomorrow. I've learned if you fully wanna maximize your garden, different things go into the ground at different times. So we've actually, we probably have 50% of our garden started already out here. It just doesn't really look like it. Our sugar snap peas, doing awesome. Potatoes, holy moly. Our carrots, doing great. Kind of thin in the middle here, not really sure why. And we've even planted our second row of carrots three weeks after we planted the first. And this is probably the craziest thing of all happening in our garden so far. What the heck do you guys think these are? I didn't plant those seeds, they're volunteer plants. I was thinking that there's a chance that whatever was in the compost pile, the seeds made it into these beds, but we didn't use anything out of our compost pile last year. But if you remember in previous videos, instead of adding stuff to our compost pile over the winter, we were adding food scraps to our beds directly. I'm thinking these are spaghetti squash plants. Not one, but like 10 of them. So these are gonna have to go. I didn't rip them out now because they're extremely thorny and I couldn't find my gloves. Our onions, we tried growing directly from seed this year. And what I learned, what people do to get this perfect onion spacing is they plant like 10 seeds in a cell. They let them all grow to about, I don't know, this height or so, maybe a little bit less. They dump the cell out. You can see the remains of that right here. They separate all the little onion seedlings and then they carefully plant and space them where they want. This is much better in my opinion than sprinkling your seeds and then going through and thinning them out. So I would say this is a really big win for the year. I did this off camera. I was a little bit worried because they didn't look really strong the couple of days after we transplanted them, but I could say they're looking a lot better now. So we're hoping to get a killer onion harvest this year. Here's our first row of beets right here. I'm not sure how many weeks old these are. Not everything sprouted, so we we went ahead and planted a couple extra seeds in the space over here. And then a few weeks later, we already planted our second row. So we might go ahead and thin that out tomorrow. Hands down, the biggest win of all is our lettuce bed. I didn't know how this idea was gonna turn out. If you remember, we sprinkled generously rows of different types of lettuce and we didn't thin the seeds. We thought we'd just let them all grow because we don't wanna harvest heads of lettuce. We wanna do the cut and come again method. And we've already harvested almost a full row of romaine. Not only that, but we've 
we've also cut a lot for friends. We've been having fresh salad every single night, and you can see we still have plenty of lettuce. We did romaine, arugula, romaine, and that's the row we've been cutting from. A red salad bowl lettuce. We also have some mixed greens in here because not all of this germinated romaine. Can't wait to get to that row. And then back here, we also have some mixed greens, except we already have our first pest problem of the year. If you look really closely, we have a bunch of little holes on our arugula. At least it's not our romaine, right? And my research leads me to believe this is from a flea beetle. No beetles to be found, but we do have a few tricks up our sleeve that we wanna try. We're willing to start here and see what this does, mainly because we already had it. But I can also say that there's so many people that say, I've used diatomaceous earth and it did diddly squaws. Really curious to see what this does. I don't even know how to know if it's working or not because this lettuce is already infested with flea beetles and we don't really see them in action. So they must come in the cloak of night or something. Dusting. So this is another organic gardening method. It's it's like a sticky card. This is supposed to be good for flea beetles, especially in the early stage before they, there's too much of a problem. We might already have too much of a problem, but we're willing to try it. So we're just gonna stick this guy, oh, right about there or so, and we'll check back. Some friends I talked to earlier today, they've had the same problem with their arugula, maybe their other baby greens as well, and they said the only thing that they found to get rid of it is to physically cover the arugula when it's coming up. So miss the boat on that one. That might be something that we can try next year. Another thing that they have tried using is neem oil. I don't even know what that is to be honest, but basically there's more things to try. So we're just gonna keep on trying and we can still eat our arugula. Gosh, Dad is such a softy, isn't he? Oh my goodness. Bugaboo, it's gonna be really hot today. It's gonna be a high of like 87 degrees, which means it might be 90 here. <laughs> Hi, Bugafish. <laughs> yep. Yep. little guys are you ready to go to your forever home no we want to stay inside where it's safe I know seedlings a ship in the harbor is safe but that's not what ships are built for hey buddy yep that's a really good spot for you we started whatever we could indoors this year. If you wanna know what our indoor seed starting setup looked like, we did an elaborate video on it. I'm highly underwhelmed with how large these starts are. These are tomato starts, and if you've ever bought a tomato start, they're pretty big. All the ones we've bought are like a foot, foot and a half in height. They're big plants, and the peppers we've bought are also pretty stout. Mind you, they're much larger containers than these little cells we have ours planted in. But I was trying to figure out why don't our starts look like that? People I've talked to in the area, I've asked them, when did you start your tomato starts? And they said, 
February, little sweet innocent Alyssa has been following the recommendations on the seed packet of for tomatoes starting them six weeks before you plan to put them in the garden. Our last frost date is around May 20th and I was planning on putting stuff in the garden between June 1st and June 7th just because last year we had a pretty good frost in mid-June and I thought they're okay growing indoors so better safe than sorry. But now I see that other people are putting very old tomato and pepper starts into the garden and ours are teeny tiny. That said, I was talking to one of my friends and she said it's taken her a few years to get really good starts. And she also, prior to this year, was putting these little piddly starts in our garden and she said, believe it or not, they do catch up. So we're not gonna worry about it. We're gonna go ahead and proceed according to plan. Part of me is wondering also if these cells are great for starting your seedlings, but they're not so good for getting a more mature plant. So I feel that the growth of these pepper seedlings is kind of stunted. In my mind, they've looked like this for weeks. And maybe if we were to up-pot them, maybe they would grow uh, to the capacity of that pot and maybe they would be bigger. I knew that was a risk when I decided on these cell sizes and we didn't really have the space to put them in larger pots. So I thought if I think it's a problem, that's something that we'll try to do better next year. We actually started five trays of seeds and my thinking was that we have the space, we might as well start as much as we can and whatever isn't gonna fit in our garden, we can give away. One of my good friends came by yesterday and she said, I'll take whatever you don't think you're gonna plant in your garden. She actually just built a lot of raised beds. Her garden's quite a bit bigger than ours. So I get, went ahead and gave her two full flats, mostly of leftover pepper and tomato seedlings, which people seem to like the most. As I was saying earlier, I've taken all the thought out of the garden this year by planning ahead of time when I had a lot more time. It's really gonna be straightforward today. There's absolutely no thinking involved. All I have to do is follow my plan. I think we're gonna start with our peppers. wasn't really sure how getting these out of here was gonna be, and I can say it's a little bit challenging. I'm all about non-disposable, but I can say that the disposable cells are a little easier to get the starts out of unless I'm missing something. Take a nice tea break in a minute. your leftover kale said no one ever 
we have one killer kale salad. Maybe I could share it with you guys this summer. And we're gonna try pairing it with some calendula. Kale is just infamous for getting infested with aphids. So the first thing we're gonna try is what's called companion planting. Some plants attract the insect that you don't want on your other plants, so you could think of it as kind of a decoy plant. And then other plants repel certain pests. So we're gonna sort of make a kale sandwich. We're gonna do a row of arugula, kale, kale, I'm sorry, not arugula, calendula, kale, kale, calendula. And we're just gonna see. I don't think it's gonna work, but I'm willing to try. And on top of that, calendula is edible. our green onions the plan was to do succession planting with these so I have them staggered on a three-week schedule so every three weeks I have on the calendar to start more seeds indoors like this and we have about eight to ten seeds per cell the idea is that you plant the whole cell and then you have a bunch of onions except our cut and come again onions are doing so well that I don't think I'm gonna bother with this so we do have more that are gonna be ready in a couple of weeks so I think I'm just gonna plant these in two rows and then we'll just plant flowers around them <laughs> talked to someone the other day and when they were growing up they used to make what they called nasty sandwiches you know nasturtiums makes sense <sighs> making good time last thing to do are the things in pots Well, we did it. The garden's planted. Yay! Took a little longer than expected. It's just kind of tedious work. <sighs> I'm pretty happy with that. I didn't get to use as many flowers as I was wanting, but we did start a lot extra thinking that we were only going to use a handful. I got a lot of nasturtiums planted. That's probably my first and foremost priority. And now we wait. We'll probably give us a really good watering, but we're probably gonna wait until it's not so hot outside because water is just going to evaporate. And here I planted some mint. If you've never tried it, one of the best smoothies in the world is banana, cocoa powder, and a handful of mint leaves. It is a green smoothie, but it basically tastes like chocolate mint. So amazing. We got our torpedo melons in here and here. They're from Johnny's. They are a small melon. I think they only get to about one to two pounds each. So I'm excited to see how those do. Got our cucumbers planted. Again, I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on with these buckets before I finish those. And yeah, there you have it. A successful gardening day.